Hey everybody, it's Ryan, Andrew, Sabrina, and Hannah. We are out here at one of my soybean fields. We're gonna be doing some cover cropping today. We've got our DJI T50 from AgriSpray on the trailer. We're gonna be doing some cover cropping today. So Andrew's about to show us how fast it is to switch the tanks out. And uh, what are we putting down today? So we're gonna do some uh rye some cereal rye uh, we'll put that down that's a you know grass product it's going to help take any extra nitrogen up you know that might be in the soil i think the future plan for this field is to seed it down to alfalfa right that's what we've talked about uh, so we want to you know manage whatever nutrients are out there help eliminate any chances of erosion and then um you did rip this field um right this would have been two years ago, ago. yep so one of the products in there is a tillage radius, just to make sure that we don't have increased compaction when you go combine your beans this fall, you know, run gray carts, whatever. Having that tillage radish in there is going to help uh, minimize any risk of compaction. Plus, if there's any compaction left over from spraying, from spreading fertilizer, planting, you name it, that tillage radish is going to be good there. So it's going to have about eight pounds per acre of tillage radish, a couple pounds of turnips, and then the rye. And uh, we've done that in the past. One thing that you got to watch with cover crops is what kind of herbicide program we've used in this field, because if we have residuals, that'll really affect if the cover crops are able to get established. We, we have some weeds out here this year, uh, but we were really managing our chemistry so that we wouldn't have any carryover for your alfalfa crop. So there's always that fine balance of just having enough weed control to not have any weed escapes but yet not have any carryover for uh, following years, especially as we have different weather conditions. You know, past three years have been really dry. The more moisture we have, the less chance of any residual carryover. So as, as an agronomist, that's something you're always trying to balance and manage. We want to have good weed control. Uh, there's a little bit of water hemp. Water hemp's becoming a big weed in our um, area. You know, that thing can produce a lot of seeds. Again, knowing that we're going to be seeding it down, it's not as big of a concern as if it was going to stay row crops the next two or three years. So pretty happy with uh, what we have out there this year. Uh, having this cover crop established well for this fall will be nice. And, and that's another reason why we're doing this in August. If we try to establish these cover crops, you know, mid to end of September, it just doesn't give those roots uh, long enough to grow uh, to do what we're trying to ask them to do. So the drones give us the ability to do that at this stage of the crop. These beans are going to start turning in the next week or two. We're talking 90 degree temperatures this next week. We're going to see a lot of crop maturity going on. So it'll be exciting to see what happens. Hopefully we get that rainfall they're talking about next week, Thursday, to germinate everything we're putting down today. If it doesn't rain for two or three weeks, well, we might have wasted our time here. Mm -hmm. But pretty good chance of rain for Thursday. We'll see what happens. But give you a good experience on uh, running the cover crops with this drone. Sabrina and I went out uh, a weekend ago. Uh, there's some county cover crop cover crop programs in the area uh, we were able to do 160 acres of cover crop at about 43 pounds per acre of the total mix uh, we got the 160 that was about what eight fields we got that done in about six hours so right. pretty efficient so this field's nowhere that size but <laughs> hopefully well, we can and that was a lot of, of anywhere from 15 to 30 acre fields all right you know so okay take some time to you know pack up and move and all that when you get some good going this isn't too bad of going you know, I would say a uh, 30 acre field like this should be able to get that done hour and a half. Okay. All right, let's get started. So right now the drone's got the sprayer tank in it. We're about to swap it out for the spreader tank. This is just pulled out of the box, hasn't been used yet. We've got these two uh, liquid deals right here, just wing nuts that tighten that. It's a hose barb fitting, isn't that? pull that piece off and then i like taking that and putting that back on so we don't lose it okay and now that we're on this side of the drone you can see our plug right here so we got that nice rubber protective cover now we've disconnected the electronics on that we're going to do the same thing with this wing nut over here now when we take that tank out, it just lifts right up, then you gotta turn it. Now you got your liquid tank off. So putting the dry unit on, reverse process, tilt it a little bit to get the spinner down. 
Make sure you got it in there the right way. <laughs> there we go. So it's gonna sit on the way pins. Plug that connector back in. Pull that rubber seal down. Clip that in place. Now you're ready to spread. Agrispray's got a really good video on how to calibrate these. So if you want to put a link in there, if people want to watch the calibration process, uh, Agrispray does a good job with that. Depends how many people you have. Right. I like using these pitchers uh, to measure my cover crop seed out. I'll pre-weigh them ahead of time so I know how much seed, I, how far up I got to fill the pitcher, then I don't have to constantly weigh it. Uh, so like I said, we're doing about eight pounds per acre of the tillage radish, then a couple pounds per acre of the turnip. Okay. So I got my mixes figured out by my marks on the side there. We're just gonna put it into a bucket, mix it up. Then as we put the rye into the drill, we're gonna put the radish and turnip in there as well. Okay. So, and then it's going to be a full pitcher of radish. What? It's spinning. It does. That's, that's your low tank sensor. So if that thing spins, it knows there's no product in there. Okay. So I just set that just like that. Yeah, you're going to get a more consistent pattern if you're going perpendicular to the wind instead of parallel to it. Okay. And we've got the large outlet, so okay. we'll just pick urea. Um, application rate is, uh, we'll do 60 pounds per acre, spinner disc speed at 1300, and flight speed, I always max it out, 32.8, height above crops, uh, 15 feet's plenty. Does it still apply where you get twice the width of or is it no. different? No. Nope, this is different. So it's it's gonna throw it about as wide as it will go, no matter. So you can be way up in the air and, and oh, really? spread this stuff. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now we're just going to uh Sabrina and I will grab the drone. We'll move it out to the middle of the road so we're away from any obstacles. If you did everything here, that'd only be 15 loads.
do you like that Top Gun action? <laughs> well, I'd say that's a job well done. Sabrina, what do I need to know to get hooked up with one of these drones? Well, if you are in this area, you can contact Highland Ag and Air. Otherwise, you can click on the link below and AgriSpray will hook you up with your local dealer. It's now early November and you can see how the cover crop trial is turning out. So, we haven't gotten very much precipitation in the last two months. We actually went over 30 days without any measurable amount of precipitation. And I definitely think that affected this cover crop trial. Um, overall, if you look at the field, you'll notice that there is striping. However, I'm absolutely certain that's not from the drone. That is from when we had gone through and harvested this. Uh, the soybean chaff actually kind of acted as a mat and kept some of that stuff from coming up and uh, drowned some of that out. If we had more moisture, I'm fairly certain this would be a lot more green at this point. Uh, but I wanted to come up and film it before we got a real hard frost. And um, I mean, overall, even the radishes, there's some nice growth on the radishes here. So let me pluck one quick. All right, what do we got here? kind of cool seeing these things grow but uh, one of the things that I was thinking about doing was doing a, a winter rye trial at the place where I live and the point of that would be to get more material out in the field so that when we're done harvesting I can let the cows out there and they can have more graze on um, that would give them a substantial amount of feed I didn't do it this fall because even in August, I knew we were very dry and there wasn't any rain in the forecast, which definitely affected my decision as to not do it this year, but that's something I'm looking at doing next year. Um, maybe a little, little bit earlier on to try to get some growth going out there so that there's something for the cows to eat once we're done harvesting. We just got the corn and fodder made off the field out at my place, so we're uh, looking at fixing the fences up to get the cows out there and I think that if I could do something like this on a wetter year where it has more potential for growth I think there would be a benefit to it so you can see the pass that we had left along the road there so it did grow it's just that we didn't have the moisture to back it up so anyway I'll see you next time